Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle channel. This video is an update on my progress with the Omnicell Weldless Kit. This is a 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery that was constructed without using a spot welder. There's another video where I show how I put this together and I'll link to that in the description. This is the finished battery and there are nine cells in total. There is a BMS inside here that can supply a maximum of 10 amps. The charge and the discharge is using a single XT60 here. And I'm gonna be using this to charge peripherals and power 12 systems um, like the, the lights on my bike, for example. I think the nice thing with this is that if I decide that I don't wanna use the cells in this battery anymore, I can just take it apart in a couple of minutes and reuse them. And that's quite a powerful concept. Spot welding would make the same job very difficult and dangerous and time consuming. The benefits of this system seem pretty clear to me in that it would allow the repurpose and recycling of cells on scale. It's actually very interesting that I'm building this right now because in the EU, there is legislation being discussed that would mean batteries had to be repairable, i.e unless this battery could be taken apart and repaired, then it can't be sold in the EU. And the EU is the world's most important trading block, arguably, so companies pay attention and they make the changes. Um, that's why, for example, your iPhone right now has a USB-C on it and you can charge it using any charger. Naturally, of course, defenders of the status quo in e-bike land Bosch are completely against this legislation. Bosch says it's not safe to have batteries repaired. Bullshit. The reality is that they're terrified of people being able to, say, take apart a four-year-old Bosch battery and then refresh all the cells in it. Bosch wants to be able to control that market. And they're spending millions of euros to get this legislation thrown out. Not because it can't work, but because they want to defend their bottom line in the most cowardly way possible. Never mind the benefits in resource consumption and recycling that would come from that. If this law can get passed, though, things like the Omnicell system here become more viable and will be looked at more. I think most of the pushback against something like this is still going to come from safety grounds. Like, what if the screws vibrate loose? Do the connections get hot? And these are valid questions. The best way to answer those, though, is just to test it and to, to demonstrate things. I can't afford lab testing, sadly, um, but I'm going to do the best I can with what I can lay my hands on. I have access to a, a thermal imaging camera so I can run some loads and look at what gets hot here with the connections. For vibration testing, I have this vibratory tumbler. So this here is the vibratory tumbler. And basically, I'm going to put the battery inside. I'm going to wrap it up um, in some of this and, and basically I'm going to anchor it in place like it would be if it was strapped to a bike I'm not going to have it like free rattling around because that wouldn't be wouldn't be realistic I don't think but anyway this is the closest I can get to something that's going to shake it for a long time so I'm going to shake the crap out of it and uh, we'll see what happens over you know hours and days of this being you know simulated bounce down a road you know are these screws gonna gonna come out um, yeah we'll find out so that's it for this video. I'm going to do an update with the results of the vibration testing. And I also have um, some variations that I'm working on to try and improve the form factor of the design. And I also have enough cells coming through for a 36 volt pack. So I'm going to be able to test the packs with like a higher draw in a real world e-bike scenario. As always, thanks for watching the channel and a special thanks to the channel members and i will see you all in the next video cheers